All right, so this is problem 2D on the problem sheet on continuity. The question is the following. Is the function f of x continuous at the point x equals 1? As always, the first step is to see whether or not f is defined at the given value of x. So what is f of 1 equal to? Well, when x is 1, f of x is simply equal to 2. So, so far so good. f is defined at 1 and the value is 2. Then the question is, what happens to f of x when x is around 1 but not exactly equal to 1? And that is the question of the limit of f of x as x approaches 1. Now remember, if you say x approaches 1, that means that x is taking values that are closer and closer to 1, but x is never exactly equal to 1. So then the question is, what is f of x when x is close to 1, but not exactly 1? Well, when x is not exactly 1, f of x is x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. As always when you have a limit, the first thing you consider is your case. As x approaches 1, x squared minus 1 approaches 0, so does x minus 1. So we have a 0 over 0 case. We have two polynomials, we know we can figure out the problem by factoring. x squared minus 1 factors as x minus 1 times x plus 1 divided by the single factor of x minus 1. Now, because x is not equal to 1, x minus 1 is not 0, so we can cancel, and we're left with a very simple limit. What happens to the function x plus 1 as x approaches 1? Well, as x approaches 1, x plus 1 approaches 2. So the limit does exist and is equal to 2. So you can imagine graphically what this will look like. You're saying we consider the function around the value of x, which is 1. This is the value of x of interest. At 1, the function is exactly 2, so the y value is 2, and here's f of 1. And we know that when x is very, very close to 1, so around 1, the y value will also approach 2. So it means that around x value equals 1, so when x is very, very close to 1, the y value is also very, very close to 2. So the limit as x approaches 1 equals 2. The function at 1 equals 2, so the function here is continuous at x equals 1. Again, continuity is simply a fancy word for no break. There is no break in the function. The function is defined, and as x approaches 1, from the left or from the right, the y value approaches 2 as well. There is no break in the function, everything is nice, so we say f of x is continuous at x equals 1. So that's problem 2D. Let's look now at problem 2F. Same question, different function, different point. So the question is whether or not f of x given by this function is continuous at x equals 9. So as before, the first question is, will f of 9 exist? Well now x is exactly equal to 9, so the question is, we have two parts for f. f is sometimes this expression, and other times this one. But when x is greater than or equal to 9, f of x is the root of x plus 1. So this would be root of 9, plus 1. Root of 9 is 3, so we get 3 plus 1 equals 4. So far, so good. The function is defined at 9, and the value is 4. Then we ask, what happens to the function f of x when x is 
very close to 9, but not exactly 9. So we ask again, what is the limit of f of x as x approaches 9? But now we have a problem. We know that as x approaches 9, x will be closer and closer and closer to 9, but never equal to 9. So the question is then, which piece are we using when x approach 9? And here we have a problem. If x approach 9 from the left, then x is less than 9. And in that case, f of x equals this rational function. On the other hand, if x approaches 9 from the right, x is bigger than 9. And if x is bigger than 9, then f of x is this function. So the question is, what do we put here for f of x? Well, we cannot tell if we look at the two-sided limit. We can only tell if x is less than 9 and if x is bigger than 9. So here, we have to look at the limit from the left and the limit from the right. Let's consider the limit from the left first. So we are letting x approach 9 from the left. So here, x will be a little smaller than 9. And as we've said before, if x is smaller than 9, this is the expression for f of x. So it is x squared minus 14x plus 45 over x minus 9. So now let's figure out this limit. As always, look at your case. Well, simpler term first, x minus 9, as x approaches 9, will give us 0. The question is, what happens on top? Well, let's see. 9 squared is 81, plus 45, that's 126. Now, what's 14 times 9? Well, that's 90, 10 times 9, plus 4 times 9, 36. That's 90 plus 36, that's 126. But 81 plus 45 was also 126. So we have a 0 over 0 case. As always, we have polynomials, so we can figure out what happens if we factor both polynomials. So again, letting x approach 9 from the left. Now, we have a single x minus 9 factor on the bottom, so that's that. The top, we know we have a factor of x minus 9. Remember, if a polynomial is 0 at a value of x, which is 9 here, x minus this value is automatically a factor. The question is now, what's the missing factor? Well, the product would have to be negative positive 45. Negative 9 times negative 5 is positive 45. As x approaches 9, x is not equal to 9. We can cancel. And we're left with a very simple limit, x minus 5. And now, as x approaches 9, 9 minus 5 is 4. So the limit from the left is equal to 4. So we're halfway there. Now the question is, what happens to the limit from the right? Well, let's see. We are letting x approach 9 from the right. So if we move up, if x is to the right of 9, now x is bigger than 9. And let's go back to our function. If x is greater than 9, the function is the root of x plus 1. So we go back and we say f of x is the root of x plus 1. And now here we have a very simple limit. As x approaches 9, the root of x will approach the root of 9 plus 1. Root of 9 is 3. And we get once again 4. So let's see what we have here. The function at 9 is defined and equals 4. The limit from the left equals 4, and the limit from the right equals 4. So here, the function is defined equals 4. Both limits from the left and from the right are equal to 4. So once again, the function is continuous at x equals 9.
and you can view this again graphically. Imagine that you consider a plot of the function around x equals 9. We know f of 9 was equal to 4, and we know that as we approach, if we go back up, sorry, as we approach 9 from the left, so if we approach 9 from the left, y approaches 4. So the value around 9 on the left of y is very close to 4. And similarly, from the right, when x is very, very close to 9 but a little bigger, y is also very close to 4. So once again, there is no break in the function, so our conclusion is the same as the previous problem. f of x is indeed continuous at x equals 9.